what's going on guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Weston Boucher and I'm a model and menswear line owner out of Southern California please do click that subscribe button and like this video if you get something out of it as you will be notified the second any of my videos go live by being a subscriber okay so today's video is gonna be my top five secrets to living a better life right now so you might be wondering why would you uh, listen and take advice from uh, a guy like me who you know has run my channel on topics like grooming um, personal style health and fitness and modeling related stuff well uh, what I was thinking about is that with this video it was going to kind of kick off um, a quite a few topics that are in relation to kind of an overarching thing about men's mental health and uh, things that are related to success and business and everything in between and that is because um, over the last few years um, I don't promote it much but I do video call consults they're kind of like uh, they're a little bit like life coaching um, but they're also they also can be just like a one-time session where I talk with guys over a video chat and they come to me for uh, probably 30 minutes on average some are repeat guys that uh, we keep up with um, in terms of accountability that helps them out. But I've noticed that we've covered a broader range of topics uh, beyond my channel. And guys um, are interested in picking my brain because of the various things that I've uh, had success with over the years that aren't you know, you know just in that little narrow uh, scope, like I said. So anyways, if you do get something out of this and you feel like uh, what I'm putting out uh, makes sense to you and it's uh, improving your life, uh, as my channel's always been about helping to translate the things that have improved my quality of life to help yours. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna be as transparent as I can with you guys and today's top, uh, well, I should say tips are what have worked for me um, over the years to, like I said, live a better life right now. And it's not just about, you know, how much success you have in business, how much money you have, or a lot of those surface level things that um, can be taken away very easily, very quickly in life. So I'm gonna spend time talking about what I think has helped me at my core uh, that then translates into all the decisions I make in every area of my life. Okay, number one for me is humility. This is huge because without humility, your pride will get in the way from you moving forward, learning from others, learning in the process of life, the struggles that you go through, the challenges. So I bring this one up first because I can't really get into the other topics if you're not gonna be able to get to a place where you're humble enough to know that there's certain things that are just greater than us out there and that you know we can learn from each other. I don't have all the answers, but I can say in my experience that humility has really paid off in a, a plethora of ways and it will tie into everything I bring up uh, for the remainder of these tips. Okay, number two, therapy. All right, just hear me out. Um, I made a big list on here because I felt like this is one of the biggest ones in terms of how much it's helped me through everything in life. Um, you may be in a spot where you're immediately like, ooh, no, I don't even wanna talk about that, not something I would ever do. Again, try to practice humility and just hear me out and see where you end up after I get through this topic really quick. I'm super curious to hear your feedback about this one. Okay, obviously all these tips, I'm thinking in the um, mindset of investing in yourself. So think of it that way because the more you understand yourself, um, the more you can be a better friend, a better family member, um, a better uh, you know business partner, or whatever it might be, when you when you work on yourself and you invest in yourself like i said at a core level it is what translates into everything that you do and your attitude your actions and all that good stuff so my younger self you know i would always kind of look at therapy as i, I would see it as a negative i would see it as if you are doing that then your life's jacked up or you have serious problems or whatever now on the other side of it i see that it's more of a thing where I wish I had the wisdom at the time to know that it's a preemptive thing that you do before everything hits the fan. You know, when the damage is already done, most people then will consider therapy because they are at the end of their rope and they just don't know what to do anymore. And to that I say, why not just try to 
again, invest in yourself so you can figure out why you're wired a certain way. You can have an unbiased kind of third party person that can speak to you, hear everything you're going through and be able to offer some insight and advice on how you can like overcome a lot of things. Uh, because the thing is, is that when you just leave it up to yourself to kind of wrestle and mull over so much that we go through in life, or you just phone a friend or a family member, you have to remember that all those people in your life, although they might love you very much, they're biased. And that is the biggest distinction between how I think a therapist can help you uh, versus just people that care about you in your life in general. Again, there's nothing wrong with that and that is part of the process of uh, you know reaching out and leaning into community. But therapy is the place where you can speak freely and again, there's an unbiased person on the other side that really doesn't know you and all your background and stuff, um, you know, until you tell them, obviously. But they just don't have the same motives when they respond. There, there isn't a, a really big um, prerogative, I guess, other than just trying to help you towards self-discovery. So I bring that up because when you go through therapy, you can, uh, you know, hopefully find someone that's going to lead you there versus just fill your head with a bunch of psychobabble. Um, in my opinion, um, that's not the way to go. Obviously, you just want someone to hear everything and help, to, again, to help you to understand how you're wired so that you can have peace with that, come to terms with that, know that everything that's happened in your past has shaped you, and to be able to kind of overcome all that and, and see how to move forward or live in the present. And maybe as I'm talking right now, you're like, I'm, I'm too uncomfortable with that. I'm just, I can't afford it. I don't want to, to go that route just yet. And to that I say, again, I wouldn't tell you this if I wasn't like speaking to my younger self and just being like, please just trust me on this. Like, even if you did one session a month, you know, you could get so much out of that. And you know, what you can do that's practical in terms of finding one, go on Yelp in your area, look up therapist specifically. You'll be able to read reviews, maybe kind of get a sense of someone you might relate to more or get a personal referral from a friend you might really trust that kind of knows you and your vibe. Maybe they've had a great experience. And again, if budget is an issue, especially for a lot of us right now with the COVID-19 stuff, I've been doing my therapy sessions via FaceTime. And maybe you can inquire that since it's not an in-person session, ask them if they'll work with you on price. Maybe there's a package deal. You could do like four sessions for a certain price and it's over FaceTime or Zoom or whatever. Uh, so that is an option to consider um, in case budget's a big concern for you. I will also say that um, my therapist is incredible and she does have a podcast that she does. So you can check that out. I'm gonna put links in the description below um, regarding everything I mentioned in this video that might be helpful to you to just test the waters and start thinking a little differently about therapy. So to get more personal on that note, you know, um, with my therapist, it's not just me going in there and I say something and she goes, well, so how does that make you feel? And we just go back in circles. There's way more to it than that, especially with a good therapist. Um, it's about, you know, being humble again to realize that, you know, you always have heard that stereotypical thing of like, oh, it's all about things that happened in your childhood and this and that. Well, there is a lot to that because you, the most developmental, you know, period of your life is, is this very young age, typically, you know, anywhere between like seven and 13 years old, uh, you know, arguably um, there's a lot of different studies and stuff. Besides that, I'm seeing everything tie into, again, why I'm wired a certain way. And it's just really helping me because it's not like I don't have to just wonder anymore why I am the way I am. I can just own it and I can love myself more. And when you love yourself, you are less insecure. You're more confident. And again, all the things that factor into a healthy core for you is what you know you project into the world and, and why your relationship might improve with whoever and, and uh, or whatever you are a part of. So it's, it's really important to like think of therapy in that way is that you're investing in yourself and you're refining and trying to make a better version of you because at the end of the day, if you think this journey in life is just meant to just go solo and you got this, life will humble you in a really you know challenging way most likely if it hasn't already. Um, I personally started to go to counseling 
um, in my uh, my previous marriage where, uh, you know, I am divorced now. Me and Katie aren't married yet, but uh, I went through a lot. I lost a lot. And I was willing in that moment to open up to therapy to see if I could work on myself and figure out how to fix things and do all that. And years later, I'm still doing it. You know, when I was single, even before Katie, I was going on my own because through all those different seasons, that was the one thing that really gave me a lot of um, direction and, and practical, uh, you know, information that I could actually use and overcome a lot of those dark times. Because the, again, do it preemptively. Don't wait until it's too bad. I, I'm, I cannot stress this enough. It's important to know that when I say all these things to you guys, it's not, I have not arrived, you know? Like I'm still trying to figure out a lot of stuff for myself too, currently where I'm at. Still going to therapy. Um, it's it's a journey, like I said. You, you, I don't think you ever arrive. So, um, you know, with that said, I didn't come from a place of privilege and and money, and I did a lot of stuff DIY from day one. Like I have really just been kind of rogue from a young age, and I've been trying to be responsible for myself and just pave my own way. Um, my dad was not really in my life the way that I would have wanted him to be. And so I think that actually worked in my favor because I never considered myself a victim of anything. I was just like, well, um, I'm gonna figure this out then and, and do whatever I can to make it happen. And so that's kind of, you know, a little bit, a tidbit of, as to why, you know, I'm wired a certain way. And uh, yeah, I think that, you know, when I say this stuff to you, I'm not saying it from a place of, you know, superiority in any way. Um, I'm broken and I have damage and things like that too. I, I am not a perfectly whole person. And uh, I am just trying to help you guys to understand me a little bit more and who I am because a lot of my topics are obviously more surface level and whatnot. And, um, and that's great because a lot of those things are relevant to our lives still and still help us out obviously. But I do wanna, um, again, start doing more series and stuff where I dive in a little bit more into who I am and kind of give you guys some more background on me. All right, thanks for hanging in there for that one. Hope you are enjoying this so far. Let's move on to number three, which is balance. This seems super obvious, right? You've heard it a million times, but we, don't, we just don't do it. We're not, we're not aware of it that there's an imbalance most times because we just function with whatever our normal is and we wonder why we're so tired or overworked. It's because something is out of balance and we're putting too much emphasis on one thing, neglecting another. So anytime I feel off, it's because I either didn't get enough sleep, um, I've been working too much, um, I haven't been taking enough time to connect with others as I feel like as humans we get energy from um, others and hopefully it's good. Um, and that, you know, I, I hadn't been, you know, working out maybe enough to balance out my serotonin. Um, there's just so much regarding balance. And I feel like I try to look through, you know, that, that scope of you for my life as much as I can, but I lose track too. Um, but keep that in mind because your biochemistry is really huge. I mean, especially for me, I, I've had issues over the years with just borderline depression and I've overcome a lot of that, but it's always lurking, you know? Because I put really high standards on myself, like in terms of being productive and, um, you know, the Enneagram test, if you're familiar with that, I'm a number three. So I base a lot of my value on what I produce and I, I'm task oriented and stuff like that. So, so yeah, my biochemistry is super sensitive with the depression thing I mentioned. So I am very careful to make sure that my serotonin levels and that I'm, I'm working out, I'm eating right, I'm getting sleep, like I said, um, I'm not drinking too much alcohol because those type of things will set me off in that direction of being really sensitive where I'll wake up in the morning and if it's cloudy outside, I didn't sleep good, I'm not getting much work done. I can easily just go into a place of being really negative in my headspace, and it is most of the time I realize it's biochemistry because I'm out of balance. So if I can get those things aligned, I'm usually doing great and I can stay on track. But I think it's good to, to keep that in mind about balance, um, be disciplined about it um, because it's going to save you in the end um, in terms of your day to day. Just those little things, just being disciplined throughout the day. 
they just pay off when you go through a seven day work week because we reset as humans every time we wake up in the morning. And so, yeah, again, try to be disciplined in that area. Okay, secret number four, boundaries. This is really important and I have always struggled with it because I don't like to cause um, a stir. Like, I, I guess I don't like to have confrontation if I can avoid it. I don't want other people to think poorly of me. So if I'm uncomfortable with something, I'll just compromise and I'll just adapt and I'll let them behave how they want to some degree and I'll just absorb it and power through it. Um, this has not served me, okay? So what I'm saying is, if there's toxic people in your life or their energy just isn't good, I'm not saying kick them to the curb because we can't just do that with people in life. We need to love them and everything, but you need to be good about boundaries and what you're willing to compromise on. I have uh, over the years realized there's just certain people in my life that have brought me too much anxiety and stress and there's this entitlement that you know I should be offering them something at all times and I start to realize when I sat down, I was just more critical about it. I could see which relationships were people that actually were investing in me, they believed in me. Um, and it's not that I wanna just get something either from people, I just want to be able to talk to someone and know that we are both looking out for each other and it's not just about what we can get out of each other. And that, you know, they aren't just sucking me dry of my energy every time I walk away from an interaction with them. If there's people like that in your life, family, friends, it's okay to make boundaries, to set boundaries and to, they might not like it, but they will respect it either way and start to just notice how much of an impact on your attitude and vibe, you know, after having some time with, with said person. And if you can't do it right now because it's just not, you know, uh, there's no way to do it, especially with this quarantine thing or whatever might be happening in your life, just take steps, baby steps, to kind of get there, to the eventual process of, you know, just kind of getting them slowly, slowly less involved in your life. And if they continue to work on themselves, maybe, you know, you can see there's some healthy stuff going on and you start to um, bring them back in your life, reintroduce that. Um, but this has been huge for me. Um, I, I'm okay with it now to just having a very small circle of people in my life um, because I feel like, again, it's healthy and not toxic. Okay, number five, stress. It's a big one. <laughs> don't you guys get annoyed when you just hear a blanket statement from someone? They're like, don't worry, don't stress. Like, just relax. Yeah, it's real easy for maybe them to say in the moment or whatever. Um, and, you know, like I said myself, like I can still, you know, wake up and experience stress and anxiety about a plethora of things. And it is something I'm always trying to manage. Um, but what's a way to, you know, to just knock that down progressively? Um, you know, there are action steps you can take if you really look at it, you know? It doesn't, you don't have to have a super stressful life long term. There is an exit strategy, but you're gonna need to, to really dig into that and see what, how, you know, how you can get there as quickly as possible. So yeah, you have to remember that stress and worry will never add a single second to your life. I'm not saying be reckless and just don't think about a game plan, how to get out of a bad situation, but make it productive, you know? Um, I, I had written down some things here too that I think will help. Um, you know, where what I do is I like to take my negative energy and just channel it somewhere. So if it's in the morning, I will typically journal, uh, pray, um, I'll just kind of talk to God in a format that's written and I'll just say what's going on in my life. Like I said, it's in a journal sense. If you don't aren't comfortable with that, just start writing about what you're going through and just voice it aloud, you know, or, or loud if you want. Um, and you can look back on that at some point. I, it's really interesting looking back at my journals to see how much I've really overcome. You just don't realize when, because you're kind of living now to some degree and you, you, you don't have anything to reflect back on unless you have an incredible memory, which I don't. So I like to journal in that, that regard. Um, but yeah, you can take that negative energy and go work out. That's something I, I often do. I know it sounds kind of like, oh, that's real easy to do when you're feeling super down, but it's not. Like you really just have to force yourself to go. But when you start sweating, biochemistry changes, your serotonin's better, so you start feeling better. It's a guarantee. Um, 
you know, phone a close friend or a family member, someone that you can confide in. Just voicing things will relieve stress oftentimes. You have to unload it somewhere. Um, but you know, take into, take in, into account where that person is that you're reaching out to because you may drain all their energy too. So try to choose wisely. If they're going through something, don't dump that on them too in that moment. Um, find another method, like I said. You know, ha have a glass of wine, read a book, watch a show you love, um, you know, go on a walk or get out in nature. You just have to channel it somewhere uh, so you can refresh, reassess, and ultimately progress. Okay, so even though I said these are the five secrets to living a better life right now, doesn't mean that I don't have more. These are just the things that came to mind first because, you know, to, to bring it all full circle, you have to invest in yourself. It starts here. Most people, like I said, without humility, their pride gets in the way. And you think of, think of so many people in your life right, you know, right now that you could analyze really quickly and just go, wow, in that instance, they weren't willing to look in the mirror. In that instance, they were willing to look in the mirror and then go, oh my gosh, how many times have I done that too? We are just so um, incapable of looking at ourselves in the mirror because we're just, we're living our life. And when you look through your own eyes, you just think your world's just so important. And um, it is, it is important, obviously, but um, I think that self-reflecting can really uh, do a lot because you may not be able to control other people, but you can control what you do and how you operate and the energy that you put out um, towards other people. So keep that in mind. Um, be humble. Like I said, it's, it's so important to all the things I mentioned. And, um, you know, again, don't uh, exclude the option of therapy. I know that's really uncomfortable. I get it. I know you guys are like, oh, I'm not going to do that, but thanks for the other tips. I just I can't go down that, that road. Please, if anything, do that because that you, you just can't, again, you can't go this life alone. You have to dig deeper. You have to unpack. Even if you've had a, a sort of semi-charmed life, like you, you still have stuff it's in there and figuring out how you're wired is just, it's just been so huge for me. Like I have just progressed so much when I think back and I also think back um, to, again, the tragedies and things that I've gone on in my life that I've been through and when I've lost everything and come back from that, there's no way I'd be where I am right now if it wasn't for my therapist. Um, she is just incredible and I just want to say right now to her, like, thank you so much for what you've done in my life. Um, I'm just so grateful. Um, I hope that you can find a therapist in your area um, that can, you know, get you to that place as well to where you just have that person that you can confide in. And again, just look to for direction, um, in this crazy thing we call life. So if you enjoy this video, please like it, please share it. Um, I, again, please subscribe. I'm going to hopefully have more videos very soon. Um, they're going to be more in line with the mental health, emotional health, um, you know, business related and whatnot. Um, ask any questions. I will try to get back to everything if I can. And yeah, just thank you guys. Thanks for listening to some of my background and I'm just uh, grateful to have you guys. So thank you. I hope you're all staying inside, staying healthy, staying safe, and I will see you guys next time.